Another Chinese lab, Kawai, is on the roll at the moment. They have been releasing models upon models and we have been covering all of them for the last few weeks on the channel as you can see here. Just recently they have released two new models, Cat Tab 32 billion and Cat Coder which are a pair of code oriented large language model developed to push forward code intelligence via agentic reinforcement learning. Cat Dev 32 billion is an open source 32 billion parameter variant intended to be broadly available, whereas Cat Coder is its slightly more powerful counterpart similar model but only accessible via API. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. In this video, we are going to install this Cat Dev 32 billion parameter model locally and we will check out how exactly it performs on software engineering tasks. Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. I will also be talking a bit more about this cat coder. If you look at cat coder, it is only accessible via API, but the benchmarks are quite interesting for both of them, by the way. If you go to Sui Bench verified benchmark, this cat dev has achieved 62.4% result rate and cat coder. 73.4% and that has put both of them among the stronger open source accessible models in software engineering tasks and I mean the cat tab one. Architecturally it is quite interesting too but let's get the ball rolling and we will um, be installing it locally and how it works. The tool which I am going to use for this purpose is VLLM. If you don't know what VLLM is, just go to my channel, search with VLLM and you should be able to find this video. Uh, and if you're following along, you can just watch this video and get it installed quite quickly. Let me take you to my terminal. This is Ubuntu system I'm using and I have one GPU card, NVIDIA H100 with 48 GB of VRAM. It's a big model. So you just have to make sure that you're aware of that. Next up, let's use VLLM command in order to serve this model i'm just serving it on one gpu and i am enabling the tool call which means that it can access external functions and also the tool parser is from quen3 coder let's download the model and serve it and the model is being downloaded there are 14 shards of it while it downloads let's talk a bit more about this model and its training and its architecture so in, the, in terms of architecture and training workflow, these CAT models are built through a multi-stage pipeline. Not only that, let me quickly take you there. So first up, there is a mid-training. So starting from a pre-trained base where they have taken the world data and then they have trained the model, then comes a mid-training. This is where they have fine-tuned the model for capabilities like tool usage, um, which means that executing external tools in sandbox. They have also used multi-turn interactions, instruction following, integration of coding knowledge from git commits and pull requests, and also in general reasoning. Then came the supervised fine-tuning where they have collected human annotated trajectories across eight user task types. For example, feature implementation, bug fixing, refactoring, test generation, and eight programming domains which includes user interfaces, ML, infrastructure security to teach end-to-end -end task performance. They also use then reinforcement fine-tuning. So before full reinforcement learning, they introduced teacher trajectories where they used ground truth annotated paths to constrain exploration, supervise rollouts, terminate bad deviation, and stabilize training. So you see, they are trying to tune the model as much as possible in this specific coding domain and then came the agentic rl scaling this is a stage where they built a trajectory tree representation of possible execution paths and prune it intelligently using entropy based pruning to select nodes that carry the strongest learning signal so as to reduce wasteful compute and that is actually quite interesting in my humble opinion and that is why you see all of these benchmarks where it has performed really really well just behind gpt5 codex they also have used prefix caching for long prop computations and infrastructure they call seamless flow to manage scheduling across heterogeneous compute 
where they have decoupled agentic logic from the reinforcement learning. What they have shared uh, the data, I mean, in their um, press release and blog post, that they have observed that after RL scaling, they have seen around 32% reduction in interaction turns, which has in, you know reduced the latency while not compromising on the performance, which is quite interesting. And this is a model on the hugging face, which you can also readily download and use. And that is what I'm going to uh, use shortly. While that happens, if you're looking to rent a GPU on very affordable price, you can find the link to Mast Compute in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50% for a range of GPUs. I also want to introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are iGent. iGent is the world's first multi-agent workforce desktop application that empowers you to build, manage and deploy a custom AI workforce. And the model is now being served on our local system. Let's also get a GUI. I'm just going to use Open Web UI in order to serve the model. Let's wait for it. And the model is now running. Let me give it a prompt. And this is a prompt just for your information. And this prompt is testing model's capability to reason end-to-end -end over code where it will be diagnosing a bug from our error message plus source. And then it is going to generate a patch plus test that fixes it. So you see, these are the instructions. Then I have given it a bug. And this is from a production environment. And this is our code. And from there, it should generate that high quality structured output. Plus it should also maintain the constraints that um, the patch should be minimal. It should be backward compatible. It should test correctness and full completeness in one message. Let's see what it produces here. There you go. So it has immediately uh, did the root cause analysis. There is a difference, updated test. And these are the commit details. It is telling me all the fix. And you know what? It has done wonderfully well. This is the correct fix. And the patch is very minimal. And you can just save it and run from there. And these are assertions which you can use to test it out. And there are some rollback plans too. Okay, that is good. Let's try to build something which, go, which we could actually run. Okay, in the next task, I'm asking it to create me a fully functional 3D molecular chemistry lab simulator in a single HTML file using 3.js that includes a lot of things like core molecular engine, advanced chemistry feature, interactive laboratory, educational components, technical requirements are these, and then some advanced interactions. It is quite a hard one. Let's try it out. I'm just going to go here. I'm just going to open a new chat and paste it here and let it run. While it runs, let's also check the VRAM consumption. So it is consuming almost 80 GB of VRAM, you can see. Okay, so just that, you know, I have 80 GB of VRAM, so that is good. Let's wait for it to finish and then we will see what is happening. So you see it has it is already understanding what it needs to do. From there, it says that it is going to require a full flight web application with multiple files. But I can provide you with a comprehensive working prototype that demonstrates the core functionality. This is, I think, different. Instead of attempting it and just failing, um, you know, royally, it is understanding its constraints and offering me that, okay, I'm just going to give you a uh, prototype, which is good. So let's see what it produces. It is, it is telling me it's a scaled down of, of but fully functional prototype. Let's see. And this is a HTML code which it has produced. Still writing, let's wait for it. And it has finished producing the code. So let me scroll down to show you. So it has tried to do a lot of features there, as you can see. And it says it can be extended with a shader based density cloud. So these are all the features which it has implemented and how to use, like open the file in some browser and then click anywhere. We will check it out shortly. 
and then some expansion ideas for the future and some of the limitations which are expected so model is setting the expectation too let me see if i can run it here so maybe i'll just click on oxygen Nope, nothing is happening here. Maybe, and I have seen that sometimes what happens, this doesn't work. So I'm just going to copy this whole code and put it, open it in the browser. Let me do that. I'm just copying it. I have opened it in the browser. I'm clicking, nothing is happening. So I'm just going to go back. And where is my VLLM? Let me tell the model. I'll say I'm clicking on the buttons in and nothing is happening. You are absolutely so totally agreeing and then it is just going to fix the version. Let's wait for it to see. Okay, so I have done around 14 retries and it has come up with this interface, but still it doesn't work. So let's say, for example, if I click on the element on the left, it selects it. And then it asks me to click in the 3D view on the right. I don't see anything. When I click on show orbits, still doesn't show me anything. So you see canvas clicks, I'm clicking here. Nothing is happening. So I would say that is a fail. Uh, let's try out one more coding prompt. So let me create another HTML file. This is where I am asking it to create me a self-contained HTML file where a rocket zips across the screen and it should be colorful. It should have some trail. The movement should be, you know, smooth and obey the laws of physics and that sort of stuff. Let's wait for it to finish and we will see what it produces. And just a quick thought on this one. I think coding is one area where models have improved a lot. We have OpenAI's codex. We have um anthropics clot coder and there are a lot of other coding agents out there so in that field these companies need to do something real real innovative to become a differentiator at the moment i don't see much improvement in terms of practicality where it would be any superior or different to what we have in let's say in this window all of these names, Gemini, Sonnet, and um, GPT Codex, all of them are quite good, better than this one, what I have seen so far. But uh, the lab one was a hard one. Uh, I think all of these which I have tested, they have struggled with it. So, and this one is also struggling. If it would have done this, it would be, I would have then said this is at the top. That is why I'm always a bit wary of accepting all of these benchmarks, but anyway. Let's go back and see what is happening. Let's wait for it to finish and I'll show you what it produces. Okay, it is already doing something. I think it has done it. So I'll just open it. Maybe I'll just make it a bit bigger. So it has uh, produces a lot of things. Then I'm clicking on the screen. So that works. So this one is quite better. Of course, the shape of rocket can be improved. It is quite random as you can see. What I, okay, this one is good. But I don't see much trail there. Though I do see the trail of fireworks. Maybe it you know this there is a trail. It is a kite like tail which you can see. But this shape could be improved. Okay, so so look, not bad model at all. Uh, I mean, uh, but it is not different from the other coding agents which are available. That's it. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think about this? Please like the content and subscribe to the channel. And please consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. Thank you for all the support.